This is part number two of the PTO winch install. If for some reason you found this video first before the part number one, up on the top right, I'll put a link to the part one. Just a quick little note before pick up where I left off. Normally in my video format, I give you tools and parts and stuff like that. I, I wasn't even gonna try to lay out all the tools I used for this project. It was massive. The only thing that I would suggest is making sure you have a set of service wrenches uh, because they get really big and they're small to get in the tight places that you're gonna need to tighten up some of these hydraulic fittings. All right, another day down. Didn't end up recording, but I did get a lot buttoned up last night. I was just worn out. Everything, uh, tighten up wires. The grounding point for the wire harness, I attached to, there is, you can't quite see it, but if you were to ever take on this project yourself, kind of up behind that cluster of wires that I got zip tied right there, there there's like a wire clamp I grounded it to that then that that wire cluster that's an extra set of wire ends and things that come on the harness and I believe the same harness is used on say the M1084 truck uh, to go out to the crane for some of the controls that's why and those those are just capped off I just secured them up there because I believe I'll be able to use those in the future because the wires go up to the other pigtails that are inside the dashboard cluster that's installed with the tachometer. So that's giving you some wire infrastructure that comes down here to the frame of the truck to use for other stuff. Everything from basically this point back is secured. Um, hydraulic lines tightened, secured up everything the way that they should be and tighten everything back up in the cab uh, I still have that issue with the wire connector I ordered something off of Amazon that I hope is going to work so I'm gonna work on I'm gonna try to temporarily hook up that wire with like a temporary pigtail I'm gonna attach this ground to something up here and then I went and bought some cheap hydraulic oil from AutoZone, because it was the cheapest at the time, and just put it in the tank and got a new filter and fill it and see if the PTO engages. I'm not getting my PTO symbol. I checked the breaker in the relay, uh, replaced it with a new breaker and a new relay. And I'm not sure if you can pick it up on the camera, but the relay is engaging. And the other thing is the PTO button is still engaged. The transmission will not engage. So, it's trying to do what it's supposed to do. It's one of two things. I am actually either engaged in my little PTO light on the cluster here, because when I do the lamp test, that lamp is never lit up, and I don't think it's supposed to. Or that temporary wire connection that I made for the pressure switch is just not holding once I lowered the cab and started the engine and it aired up and everything. Uh, also, my tachometer is not working and more than likely what happened was the little sensor that's used for this my truck transmission was changed and if the truck doesn't have a tachometer and they hit that change in the transmission uh, they would have no way of knowing that they hit it and damaged it putting the new transmission on because when they start the truck that's only on there for the tachometer no, no other sensors or anything use it so I have the feeling that's going to need to be changed out, but I'm going to test it. Got some hydraulic fluid on the ground. That was because I figured out why the PTO wasn't engaging. Uh, the spot that I'd picked on the frame to ground on the driver's side of the truck wasn't good. So I moved it to one of the bolts that's actually on the PTO, engaged it, and my wife yelled to me it started leaking. Uh, one of the fittings over at the T started to leak. 
and then a whole bunch of fluid started coming down on the sides out here on the wind. I'm recording this to talk about the hydraulic leak that happened when I first fired this up, and it was like a two-week delay figuring it out. Turns out there actually ended up being nothing wrong and wanted to explain what it was and talk through how I figured it out. So my initial first thought was that I had a bad hydraulic drive motor, that the seal was bad and it was passing oil through. Because what it was was the oil came out of this little breather vent right here. That didn't end up being the case because we eventually got this motor off. It fought us coming off. What it was was this little cap screw right here was so covered in paint we didn't see that this cap screw was here and it didn't show it in the drawing. So once we realized that was there and we got it off, this all came off easy. Then once we had it off, we realized that there was a little port that sends fluid. It's like a 1 16th port that sends fluid into here. There's a hydraulic piston and a bunch of clutch brakes in there. And what that's for is it, it's, it's a brake. So when you stop winching, it holds the cable in place and it needs some sort of hydraulic pressure that comes out of this manifold. It doesn't show it in the drawing clearly either, but what we determined is underneath this is a little spring check getting to the point, why did it leak? There was air in the system. Once it started moving, obviously with air, that was gonna cause this to stick open. The air went over and caused fluid to keep moving over until it puked out of that orifice right there. Because as I was troubleshooting it, I turned the PTO on and off a couple more times when we were checking the leak that was under there after we tightened it up, and it stopped. You would come over and finger it like I just did, and a little bit would dribble out. So when we pulled this off, that fluid leaked out, but this part of the system stayed closed. It refilled that side and it never puked again. If you go through and you install this, expect that to end up puking because it's gonna purge air. I also had this laying for a very long time on its side, which probably didn't help. So I got this off Amazon. It's cheap, the only thing really different off of the crazy price of like 250 bucks they're asking on eBay is the fact that it doesn't have the exact military connector, but you can simply cut the pigtail off of the old one that's no good, splice it into this, there's no polarity, and put it in. And the procedure to this is, is just remove the old one, look in the hole and make sure one of the teeth are there. Screw this in loosely till it touches and back it off about three quarters of a turn, hold it in place, and then tighten this nut down and connect it up. Turns out, I don't actually think that's what the problem was, or maybe it is what the problem was, but I ended up finding out that there was another part of the problem, and I started doing the wire connection. I thought the wire connectors I bought that I was only going to need to change the end coming out of the wire harness, and it turns out that, I guess because these are copies, uh, they look very similar, but the way that the slots are set up. Here's the part so I'm gonna need to fix the connector that was incorrect in the wire harness. Uh, this came out of the whole kit I got from Amazon. You can see the plugs are male, so I'm gonna swap that out too. They're not the same, so I'm gonna have to remove the pressure sensor tomorrow from the PTO and redo that connector as well. The tachometer does work now. I'm happy about. Uh, most people don't care about having a tack. I like having a tachometer to see where my engine's at and uh, especially with the PTO it's nice uh, to see where your RPM is at as well and uh, all the dimmer and stuff 
does work like it should with both all the buttons and the tack. Mag pickup may have been the problem, but also uh, I opened the dash cluster up after changing the mag pickup because it still wasn't working. If you've worked on these trucks, you'll know what I'm talking about. Uh, on a lot of the connections, there's those red covers that go over them with like a zip tie around it. The zip tie had broke. The connector was still over it, but the connector had walked apart. So the gauge wasn't connected. Um, I don't know if it was both of those things that were wrong because the ohm reading should have not read open all the way, but I'm glad at least today I made some progress on gotten that fixed. All right, now that the PTO and the actual winch and the controls are all finished up, I'm gonna start up here in the front, removing the bumper and installing the fair lead, the rollers and everything that need to come up front here. And then also while I'm at it with this, replacing the lower body mounts or cab mount. So I just finished routing the cable and everything through and the last step is to just get this roller put back in place and I don't think it should be terribly hard to do uh, I actually hit it out by mistake there it is the winch can be used out the front now. Hopefully getting the last leg of the winch installed done today. All right, here's the front roller block. Uh, kind of a pain bolting this one up, but obviously nowhere near as hard as the rest of this project. Then you work your way back and you get, there's two here actually, kind of go on each side of this L bracket that holds the fuel tank. Two bolts hold the two of those on together. There's some existing holes on the L bracket. Then you have this rear roller that bolts onto the four holes right there. That's going to be done doing the roller fair lead and this little light can. I have all the pieces prepped and ready. Uh, I got a set of bolts that will be here later. But this was the piece that accidentally was not given to me, uh, was sent to me, got it this week. And some other little brackets. Uh, sourced one of these online to hold some of the hydraulic lines underneath that I didn't have some hardware and stuff. Just gonna start removing this stuff from the truck and move forward.
had just wrapped up doing the rear part and moving the cable back here and that 99% finishes the project. Tested the lights, everything works, everything's buttoned back up, everything with the winch works. Uh, I just have a few minor details of like little brackets for holding the hydraulic lines and stuff like that. This bracket was bent a little bit, had to muscle it into place, but it's, it's okay. Had to get some extra hardware. Yeah, there's a little bit of a procedure for moving the cable back and forth. I'll probably make like a short video on that, but everything's on. I'm probably gonna leave the cable routed to the back most of the time. But that's it. Everything's working. Everything's on. It's uh, quite a project. Uh, after using it for a while, I'm going to drain and fill this and replace the filter. Not really sure what else to say about it. Really sucks doing it. People say that this winch is not that great. I think this is an awesome option. These trucks are not very electrically capable. It's a very small alternator. And if you mount an electric winch, you only are going to have it in the front or the back. This will go to the front and the back. They say that these are rated at 11,000 pounds, but if you read the tag, it's 11,000 pounds on the outermost spool. So that's also at engine idle with the RPM. I, I, I'm willing to bet that this is actually a 20,000 pound winch with the cable all the way out. Then if you put a snatch block and bring it back, you're doubling that, which is what this is actually designed to be used because this has got like 300 feet of cable. So that gives you a lot of options for recovery. Not to mention being able to have power takeoff hydraulic system on the truck for other things. But that's that. That was a lot of watching fast forward work. Again, thanks everyone who helped. Appreciate it. Links in the description. Thanks for watching.